This was uh, started in 1985. Steve Jobs was a keynote speaker. Martha, um, who's the, uh, Martha Stewart did the catering. We do not have Martha Stewart during today's catering. Um, and you know, when you think of Apple, you think of successful products. This has the same battery that a golf cart has. Weighs 18 pounds. Um, and this was the first Apple laptop. And you, you think about where you know, this product has come. This was an epic fail when it came out. Like, can you imagine this on an airplane? Um, and I just hold this up, oh, it fell apart. I hold this up to remind you um, that we're you know, early stages. Um, and this is sort of Boston history, thanks Sandy. Uh, this is the central artery plan. The central artery plan. So there was a big highway that was built to get people quicker from one side of Boston to the other. It basically cut people off from the water, which was a big part of the economy in the early days of the 400 years of Boston. Um, and people were really proud of this. But then as they were building it, they realized this was an epic fail. So even though they came up with a plan, they spent $22 billion to suppress the central artery and taxpayer, uh, if you're from all around the US, you helped uh, underwrite that. So the reason I hold this up is just because you have a plan, it may not be the right plan. So this, this cost uh, you, the US government uh, a lot of money. Um, the last thing I want to uh, prop I have here is this is a telephone book from 1953. And I went into a used bookstore and I bought it for four bucks. And the guy said, why do you want that? And when I took it home, I flipped through it and I found MLK Jr.'s phone number. I found John F. Kennedy's phone number. I found Malcolm Little, went on to be Malcolm X. And the reason I hold this prop is you never know who's in the room. We're going to have some great speakers who are going to be very provocative. But the next Google could be two people who met here and do something extraordinary in this exciting space. So those three props are just to kind of frame some things. Uh, raise your hand if you thought there was an interesting story there. All right. So think about that. So, you know, this is where MIT was founded the week before the US Civil War. And it was founded because Harvard was teaching science and engineering in a very theoretical way. And a bunch of people said, no, let's do it with industry, and let's do it with the mind and with hands, hands on. And it was uh, a building, this was, uh, it was Boston Tech. And uh, there came a point where they outgrew this building. And they were gonna move to Springfield. They were gonna move to right next to BU, like in a postage stamp piece of real estate. But someone anonymously bought a strip of land right here, a mile, they, it, that it was industrial and they couldn't make a real estate play on. And it's good because as a result, this land that was much too big for MIT, which Boston Tech became MIT, was set up. And the first building was this building, the McLaren. It's actually 22 buildings. And what's really interesting about this building is the different disciplines were all next to each other and they collaborated. At other universities of the time, chemistry was in one building, physics was in another building. But here, there's a ton of collaboration. Um, and right now, we're at the MIT Media Lab. This is the building that was founded in um, 2009. But this is where, for like 25 years, uh, the, media, the heart and soul of the Media Lab. So I think it's fitting that we're in uh, the place where it all began. And the Media Lab, when people think of it, they think of media, jur journalism. But actually, media is a form of the word medium. And Nicholas Negroponte said, wow, technology is going to be the medium of the future. And all these groups, their two words kind of smashed together, are doing extraordinary work. And uh, we're really proud to be collaborating this event uh, with Sandy Pentland. And, and you're going to hear from him and, and, and why this is relevant to him and his group. So you're just in the atrium out there. So those two doors, when this building was first built, I am paid designed it, that was supposed to be a functional room that was an epic fail. It didn't work. And what they ended up doing was putting a lot of groups in there, and they, they co-located. And they found the co-location of groups doing very different things came to some of the most amazing innovation. And when Sandy said, let's do this, and we said, let's take blockchain plus AI plus human, let's co-locate interesting things that are not necessarily connected, but could lead to some of the most important uh, things in, in this space. This was the room, uh, uh, you could look at the, the window. Um, so out of MIT, uh, Lego Mindstorms was invented, these personal robots. There's some re research on what robots are going to look like in the home. Uh, robot furniture, uh, self-driving cars that fold. Um, this is the Linux of agriculture. Um, 
e-ink was invented here like a decade too early, and they finally figured out how to commercialize it. Uh, there's a group here that's looking at biology to be 3D printers. They took 6,000 silkworms to make a, uh, a, um, um, a dome. Uh, and this is a wearable, a uh, second uh, large intestine that you would wear. George Church challenged one of the groups here to think about a wearable to go to Mars. Uh, and the group I was with for years, we did femtophotography, a trillion frames per second. Uh, we used terahertz to look through books without opium. You could see the ink. Um, and we did some cool things in imaging using big data, predictive analytics of the blood flow in the back of your eye. You can get your health. And I taught a class on, on making apps for Google Glass. And I had 30 of these at the time when no one had these. And I was really popular for a week. And by the end of the course, people were really upset. But Google spent like a billion dollars on this hardware. And it's interesting that I think they got it wrong. If they positioned it a little differently, it could have been very successful. It was 2010 technology and 2013. One of the, and it didn't have hand tracking. But one of the reasons I put this up here is um, Sandy's uh, has incredible alumni that are everywhere uh, around the world. And the guys that put this product together and were tapped by Google to make this, um, they didn't position it wrong. They made the right hardware. Uh, or it came out of Sandy's group, so that's kind of cool. Um, another group here uh, was looking at prosthetics and said, when I go to Sierra Leone, this was one friend of mine, David Senge, who was a postdoc here, or a PhD student here, said, we're not good at connecting technology and biology. The people in my country are missing limbs. They don't wear the prosthetics because they don't respect the human body. And he found a way to uh, scan the nub and, and figure out how to connect things. And it, he, the group is run by a guy who um, is a double amputee. He got frostbite and, uh, and is running this amazing biomectronics group. Uh, and then lastly, the group I was part of looked into VR and AR and what the future holds for it. Um, so the reason I kind of set that stage is we're at a place that does really cool stuff. Who heard something that was kind of cool? All right. So you tonight are part of that tradition. We are deputizing you to kind of stretch your mind. This isn't about what do we need to do for the next quarter. This is about what do we need to do to do something great. And all those labs here, they don't compete with Harvard and MIT and Princeton and Caltech for faculty. They go out and get the faculty that no one's looking at because they're so out there. So I want you to be a little bit out there today. Raise your hand. Say, I pledge to be a little bit out there. All right, thank you. So I went last January to this place. This is Davos. A lot of trees, a lot of security, uh, a lot of snow. And um, this was at uh, Tata. Uh, there are a lot of multinationals. These guys have like $125 billion revenue. Uh, a lot of multinationals kind of set up shop. And there's the Congress where uh, um, panels happen. And then all the multinationals kind of take over bookstores and restaurants and create these amazing lounges. Here's registration. This is the secret tunnel. If you have your badge, you get into. Uh, and there are a lot of panels like this. Um, and this was one meeting I went to uh, three heads of uh, countries in, uh, in, in Africa. Uh, Zimbabwe and uh, Guinea. And this was the, the Tata uh, party. They built the dome. Uh, there was a, a dinner with Will I Am. Um, the CEO of uh, SAP and EY got recorded in a church. And some companies pay a little bit to like, have their logos on stores. Other companies take over a whole store. Here's Microsoft. They had a cafe. I went into the Facebook. They actually built the structure. Uh, and I tried the Oculus. And then after Shale Sandberg tried it after me, we talked about it. I can tell you what she said afterwards. Um, and then Yale had a, had a gathering. They gave out M&Ms. And on the flight back, my M&Ms broke in my luggage. And now I have blue M&Ms everywhere. And this, they had a Yale party. Harvard had a bigger party. Uh, and uh, this was a real, there are a lot of these kind of midnight parties. There's sort of two events. There's the day events. And then there's a whole other crowd that comes out at night. And this guy, I had seen Eric Schmidt like six times. Uh, and I said to him, are you Eric Schmidt? And he said, no, I wish I was. I'm Steve Forbes, so that's not <laughs> Eric Schmidt. Um, uh, and uh, I was in a lounge, and I saw the Nobel Peace Prize guy. I saw the CEO of Alphabet. I saw Jared Kushner. I didn't talk to him. And I saw two queens <laughs> in a room like the size of this. It was crazy. Uh, this was a, um, the female quotient lounge. It was pretty cool. So one of the things I noticed was everywhere at Davos was blockchain. And um, you go down to this, and like at midnight, 3 in the morning, there was like tons of people in this lounge. And uh, CBBC, we have a leader from that group, is going to talk uh, today. Everywhere was blockchain. This guy, a member of Sandy's group uh, from Nigeria, is thinking about what blockchain could do in Cameroon. 
And, um, and I came away, this is Mike, one of the speakers, and I'm going to come back to him in a second. I came away saying, hey, Sandy, why don't we do something at MIT and at Davos twice a year to kind of de-hype all this stuff? Let's, you know, he loves connecting blockchain AI, and he said yes. And you know, this is like getting someone from Mount Olympus to kind of work with a mere mortal. Uh, and I want to thank Sandy for, for saying yes. Thank you for, for saying yes. Um, so all the speakers that are speaking here are invited to speak at our event at Davos. We're going to do an event there. And what we really want to do is create great video here. And so we kind of scared the speakers to death. We're like, oh, you got to do a short five minute talk. We're going to have three cameras. We have a robot camera here that's going to get audience uh, reaction. Actually, when the first speaker comes, you should sit here, uh, get a few more up front. And the real audience is the internet. And we want these talks. And Fabio did a really nice job uh, rendering them. I don't know if you guys saw, uh, he commissioned uh, artwork outside all the speakers. We want the speakers to give great punchy talks. And, and these are going to be digital tattoos that generations from now people hear what they had to say at this juncture. And you know, people may laugh at them for what they say or said they got it right. Um, no, no, no pressure. Um, then after the talks happen here, we're asking all of you to be really active. We don't want you to be couch potatoes where you're just kind of sitting back passive. We want you to talk to the speakers. So go to the, one of the four sections. And we, uh, we're really lucky. Is Chris Bishop here? Yeah, Chris Bishop is going to um, draft the white paper, and we have a great team of writers. Stand up if you're one of the writers. I want, to, I want just people to know. Uh, stand up. Uh, uh, oh, we're written, uh, Nikhil, uh, some grad students. So, uh, and Chris Bishop, do you stand up? I don't see you. Yeah, right there. So we're going to write a white paper. And who's never written a, an MIT white paper? OK. So now you have your chance to contribute to that. OK. Uh, so don't squander that. Uh, so this is going to be going back and forth a bunch of times. And, and it's hard to get lost. We're just going right out to the atrium. And Sandy and I think this is a great way to kind of involve you, you all. And so if you want to uh, double click on a point that's made here or you want to give another perspective, uh, we think we can weave this nicely into the white paper. And we think these talks and the white paper are a nice way to raise um, you know, awareness for some of the things that we care about. Um, the other thing is I've been to TED 25 times. Uh, I actually spoke right after Bill Gates. No one listened to me. <laughs> they listened to him. Um, and I helped get a bunch of talks on TED.com. I'm like 40. And so I want to think about video campaigns to really amplify these talks. So these talks that you're going to hear, some of them are not dumbing down the ideas. They may say an idea that's trying to tune in a few people. And, and you guys can help with that. I mentioned to you that we want you to be active and not be couch potatoes. Is that clear? Who's interested in being active? OK, great. Um, and then this is the illustration that, where's Fabio? Can you stand up, Fabio? Stand up, stand up. Stand up. Uh, in from Italy, I know he brought the COO of Brooks Brothers. Is the COO here yet? Coming. Coming. All right. So two years ago, he commissioned this. And these, I don't know what the story is, but this is like dystopia or utopia. You want me to tell you? Uh, real quick. OK. So AI and robotics can end very badly. Few riches controlling robotic plants, everyone else living underground. Or we can believe John Maynard Keynes hundred years ago, he envisioned technology to be used for a better society. Great. And, and then these, these are, are all today's today. speakers. We can make it. These are all today's speakers. And we're going to get you postcards. We're going to get t-shirts for the speakers. Uh, and there's a big poster if you want to do a selfie with it uh, out there. So thank you, Fabio, for having fun with this. Um, so these are the blocks. And we're about to kick off uh, David, Jeff, Naroop, and uh, uh, Alan. Alan, are you here? Or Stan? Stan, are you here? Wait, wait, where's Stan? Oh, super. Great, Stan. Um, so this is, this is going to be awesome. And uh, um, Sandy was very particular about having these guys start off, so we're excited about that. 